Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral and Bethlehem Chapel on this Thursday, August 31st. My name is Patrick Kieser and it is my joy and pleasure to be with you this day for this service of prayer. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. From Psalm 90. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands, prosper our handiwork. Our reading today comes from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, the third chapter, beginning at the sixth verse. Timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought us the good news of your faith and love. He has told us also that you always remember us kindly and long to see us, just as we long to see you. For this reason, brothers and sisters, during all our distress and persecution, we have been encouraged about you through your faith. For we now live, if you continue to stand firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Once again, our reading comes from St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. In my comments earlier this week, I noted that this letter to the community of believers there is a letter of encouragement, ad admiration, and love for a community that St. Paul had founded in his missionary journeys. Today, at the opening, we hear that Timothy, a very close companion of Paul, had visited the Thessalonians and subsequently returned to Paul, sharing news of their love and faith. And we hear, too, this deep longing on both sides for the opportunity to greet each other again face to face, to be in each other's presence. We see, again, a very obvious sense of affection and love in the Christian community. There is as well a clear sense in which the Thessalonians serve as an example for Paul, encouraging and inspiring him in his faith. And that, I think, is an essential element of Christian community. We need examples to inspire and encourage us in our faith and in our life of discipleship. That is, after all, the logic that underpins much of our understanding of the communion of saints. They are individuals who have lived with such holiness and devotion that we are invited to remember them and be inspired by their example. That is, no doubt, an important part of our faith, one we proclaim in the creeds. Yet sometimes I think we need examples that are a little bit closer to home, so to speak. Sometimes we need the examples of those we know personally and interact with in our own daily lives. So who are those people who inspire you or have inspired you in the past to grow in your faith? I think of my great-grandmother who served as such a powerful example to me as a young child and who, even now that she finds her eternal rest, continues to inspire me in the memory of her steady example of faithful living. 
I think, too, of, of colleagues and friends and mentors from young adulthood who modeled humble and devout faith in often confusing times, as well as those many individuals I have encountered in various contexts who have so fully given their lives to the service of others, to the poor, the forgotten, the sick, and the neglected. These are just a few of those faithful followers of Jesus who continue to inspire me and encourage me in my faith, even many years after I first met them. So today I invite you to spend a few moments reflecting on those who have done that in your own life, to give thanks for their impact and to pray for them as well. And as we do that, we must always remember and never forget that we too, by the living of our faith, might become a source of encouragement, indeed of inspiration, for others whom we meet. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That this day may be holy, good, and joyful, we pray to you, O Lord that we may offer to you our worship and our work. We pray to you, O Lord. That we may strive for the well-being of all creation. We pray to you, O Lord. That in the pleasures and pains of life, we may know the love of Christ and be thankful. We pray to you, O Lord that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Peter and St. Paul, our patrons, and all your saints, and trusting one another and all our life to Christ. We pray to you, O Lord. In the silence to follow, I invite you to offer your own prayers. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. <laughs>